What's up everybody? Welcome to Repair Sprout YouTube channel and in today's Google Ads for Restoration Companies video, you're going to learn everything you need to know about Google Ads. So this video is perfect for beginners who want to learn how to run their first ad and also for people that have some experience but let's say you want to learn about a specific Google Ads aspect like um, uh, for example uh, quality score or match types, all of that stuff. So uh, we'll cover all of that in this video. Don't worry if you don't know what those are at the moment. You will learn everything you need to know. So if you own or manage marketing for a restoration company, this video is specifically for restoration businesses, and you want to learn how to get more leads with Google Ads, this video is perfect for you. Now, before, before we jump into the actual presentation, I want to invite you to uh, check out the links at the very top of this video's description. The first link will be for a free website audit uh, where you can go if you click on that link you will go to our to the page on our website where you can sign up for a free website audit we'll basically go over your website analyze it find opportunities for you to grow your website traffic and the lead volume you're receiving from your website absolutely for free so if that sounds great to you make sure you go and check that out the next link will be will be for our facebook group we have set up a facebook group specifically for business owners in the restoration industry to learn marketing for free so make sure to go and join if you're interested and lastly the link the last link will be uh for a consultation call in case you want to work with us so with that out of the way check out those things uh if you're interested and right now let's get into the presentation so first of all why even run google ads here are some key benefits of google ads Intent-based targeting is the number one benefit. You can reach people who need your service right now. And how do we know that? So when, person, when a person searches for water damage restoration service in, let's say, Washington, D.C., we know that their intent is that they need help, they need someone to fix their water damage. And based uh, on that, we can reach them with their ads. And this is how Google Ads work. You target people who are searching for a particular keyword. And basically, you can target people who need your service, your restoration service, right at the moment of basically searching. So you can reach people who need your service right now. And that is the number one benefit of Google Ads. Next one is you pay per click. So you only pay for people that actually visit your website, call you on the phone. Uh, so yeah, that's another great benefit. And here's, here are some interesting Google Ads uh, statistics. So over a third of all Google searches are local. So out of billions and billions and billions of searches that are uh, occurring on Google every single month, uh, a third of them are local. Also, over 60% of ads clicked have buyer intent. And over 70% of mobile users call a business directly from their ads. So uh, mobile users, mobile Google users have an option. If you display your phone number on your ad, we'll show you how to do that uh, later on in this video but uh, they have an option to tap on that phone number and call you directly from your ad. So they don't even have to visit your website. Moving on to types of ads you should run. They're free. Text ads, call only text ads, and local services ads. So we will cover text ads throughout this video because they require the most, uh, the most uh, the amount of, you know, the biggest learning curve pretty much. Uh, there's a lot uh, to cover when it comes to text ads. Colony text ads are pretty similar. They're really uh, only a type of text ad. And local services ads are pretty automated. So they're not that hard uh, to set up. Now we suggest you try all of them. Uh, test different ad types and see which ones work the best for you. We'll have videos about colony text ads and local services ads uh, specifically. So make sure you subscribe to stay notified once we uh to once we upload those videos uh so you can learn immediately once we once we upload them right so uh in some cases make sure that you have this in mind some cases lsas may not be available in your area in your specific area they're currently uh, pushing these very hard but they're not available in all areas at the moment all right so the first step to setting up your campaigns is knowing your keywords so keyword research is a very important part check out our video on keyword research uh where we go live into the process so if you want to learn that make sure to check it out but basically if you don't conduct keyword research properly you won't know which searches uh which searches 
uh, to target. So Google offers a free keyword research tool, Keyword Planner, which we are using in that video, by the way, uh, inside their ads dashboard. This tool will help you find what people are searching for in your area relevant to your industry. So, for example, take a look at these keywords. Uh, I entered Mold Removal Dallas, and it also suggested these keywords as well that people are also searching for. So the data it displays average CPC cost per click. Uh, this is basically how much are people paying for each click they get for, from this particular keyword. Um, so it says here $32 for mold remediation, Dallas $73, right? Um, so this is per click. Monthly volume is how many people are, how many searches uh, are occurring for this particular, particular keyword every single month. So it says here 170 for mold remediation, Dallas 210 and uh, etc. So competition level. Uh, it will basically display low, medium, or high. Uh, in big, for you know, big competitive terms, uh, in big competitive areas. Sorry, like for example, Dallas. Uh, it's usually going to be a lot of competitors. So yeah, if you're competing in these particular areas, you will need a solid budget. But uh, another thing you can do is leverage your existing website. If you have a website that targets local keywords already. If you have done your SEO properly, uh, check out our video on SEO as well. You can add that site into the keyword planner, after which the tool will generate keyword ideas for you. This is another good thing you can do. Uh, and if you have done your SEO right, you can get some pretty good ideas. Now, here's another tip here. Uh, the best way to run keyword research, to perform keyword research, is to actually run some Google Ads. I know it may sound weird, but when you run Google Ads, Google will show you every single keyword that people have used to find to actually see your ad and they will it'll, you will see everything like how many people have seen your ad using that keyword how many people have clicked uh and all of that. how much how much money have you paid uh for that particular click uh so yeah that is the best possible way to find every single keyword uh that you can target uh you can also see if that keyword is converting so may, you may have keywords that people are searching for they're typing in they click on your ad but they're just not converting so uh make sure to have that in mind so if you have some money to to spend you can uh you can use google ads uh credit that they give out uh it's you know from you know 100 to 200 dollars it depends on your location uh, but they they give out a free credit and you can use that to run some keyword research if you want or you know just to test some things out moving on to match types so keyword match types help you with targeting Currently, there are three keyword match types, exact match, phrase match, and broad match. There used to be a fourth one, broad match modifier, but it has been removed this year. They have uh, been pushing to remove broad match modifier and only use these three match types. So what are these exactly? So using exact match targeting, uh, these, these are basically targeting types. So using exact match targeting, uh, will show your ads only when the user types exactly the same query as your keyword. So when you're using this type of targeting, you will show your ads only when, uh, your ads will be shown only when the user, the one that is going to be uh, advertised to, will see your ads only when they type exactly the same query as your uh, target keyword. With phrase match, it's loosened up a little bit, so your ads will be shown uh, for exact and similar searches to your keyword, right? And broad match type will target all searches related to your keyword. It doesn't matter if they're you know relevant to your specific campaign, but if they're relevant to the keyword itself, uh, they're going to be shown. So let's say that you want to target people in Dallas searching for mold removal. Uh, if somebody was to type in mold removal uh, Dallas costs, uh, that, even if that's something that you, for example, you you wouldn't want to target specifically, uh, your ads would probably be shown for that particular term. So this is the broad match type. And the broad match type can be used for, you know, finding different keywords, expanding your reach. So your reach will be the biggest with the broad match type, right? Makes sense. So uh, all of these uh, should be tested uh, when, when running campaigns. Uh, so yeah, let's move on. Now, before we proceed, you need to understand Google's goals. Google's main goal is user experience. 
part of a user of a good user experience is finding results relevant to what you were searching for. This is why you want to help Google achieve their goal and present relevant ads to the user. Uh, in return, they will reward you with better results. So cheaper ads and more leads, so, uh, actually cheaper clicks. So if you create ads that aren't of high quality, you will pay a lot more for clicks and spend your money faster without producing significant or even any results. Quick break, just in case you like what you see so far, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. It helps us see that these videos are in demand and therefore it will motivate us to keep producing more of them. Also, uh, if you need any help with Google Ads, with keyword research, with SEO, make sure to schedule a free consultation call. If you don't want to do that, join our Facebook group. It's completely free. You can ask whatever questions you might be having inside the group. There's also some free learning material available inside that group. So, uh, yeah, if you're interested, make sure to go ahead and do any of those things. Uh, and yeah, let's proceed. All right. So here's some mindset things that I want to go over. So prepare to spend money. Restoration services are expensive. This is why you may see incredibly high CPCs inside your dashboard. If you have a lot of competitors, uh, if you're in a big metro area with a lot of competition, you may spend 40 to $80 per click. Don't expect a fountain of leads on your very first day. Uh, that's another thing you need to be uh, ready for. So it takes a lot of testing before you find your sweet spot. But once you do, you should double down on it. But just know that uh, you will probably lose some money up front. But that's okay. That's normal. You need to test, test, and test. And once you find uh, ads that are working, that are yielding good results, you should further optimize and double down on them and uh, continue from there. So, uh, so yeah, here's a tip over here. Don't be afraid of money. On, don't be afraid of spending money on ads with paid advertising. You can get almost immediate feedback on what works and what doesn't. This will help you make quick optimizations and get better results over time. All right, moving on to quality score or QS for short. This is a Google's rating of your ad. QS can be in the range of one to 10. Google ads are auction based. However, the highest bid doesn't win, uh, win every time. So uh, how Google determines uh, which ads are they gonna show up, uh, show or actually rank the highest and therefore which ads are gonna get the most amount of clicks and impressions and whatever. Uh, they decide this by multiplying ads quality score with the bid. So this means that if your quality score is higher than your competitors, you can get more clicks while paying the same or even a cheaper price per click than them. So I hope that makes sense. How to improve your quality score. Target relevant keywords. Show relevant ads to users. Google user actually. Uh, write good ad copy and use extensions. We will get into that in uh quickly don't worry about it. and have a great landing page this goes a little bit um, off the topic of this video so this video is specifically about google ads landing pages are of course uh, an important element but we will have a specific video about landing pages so make sure to subscribe to stay notified or when we upload that video moving on to bidding so there are two ways you can bid you can do it manually or let google do it for you when starting out it's recommended you use manual bidding this allows you to have full control over your spending. Once you get some data, you may want to consider using some of the automated bidding strategies listed over here. Test new bidding strategies every couple of weeks. So let's go over some of these. Target CPA. So you, so you set the price of acquisition that you don't want to go over. So let's say that you don't want to pay more than $100 per acquisition or per lead, whatever. So uh google is going to try and optimize your campaigns to generate new leads actually to generate your acquisitions for less than 100 dollars. so that's uh, an example of how it works target ROAS similar thing this is more for retailers uh similarly like uh maximize conversion value to so set uh the return on aspen you want to generate um actually the return on aspen you want to get and uh google is going to try and optimize your campaigns to basically get you that return on aspect. But for these two, it's important that you have some data in your account before you run them. Because if you don't, Google's gonna not gonna know for what to optimize. Google's not, not gonna 
uh, know what your conversions are if you don't have any. So they're not going to have any data about those conversions. Uh, so it's important if you have like 30 to 50 conversions before doing any kind of target CPA. Uh, these uh, bidding strategies over here work similarly. So for maximized clicks, uh, the name it says you, uh, you're going to basically get as much clicks as possible uh, for your budget. Maximize conversions, similar thing. Uh, you're going to get as much conversions as possible, actually as many conversions as possible uh, for your specified budget. Maximize conversion value. Uh, this is again for retailers. So you're going to get the maximum conversion well, value, the name it says, uh, for your specific uh, budget. Target impression share is a little bit different. Uh, you set the percentage that you want uh, of the impressions that you want to get and Google is going to try to show your ad uh, the most. So this is not really recommended uh, if your goal is conversions and you want to have as as much profitable ads as possible. Uh, so this is not recommended for you. Uh, if your goal is visibility only uh, and adopt that that's that, that's your goal, your goal is probably conversions and money, you want to make as much money, right? Uh, so targeting pressure share is not something that you want to go after. And of course, manual CPC, you set the manual, uh, the, the, you manually set the cost per click that you want to pay and Google is going to do uh, basically uh, bit, uh, use that bid for you. So uh, yeah, it's important to know the target CPA, target ROAS as bidding strategies are going to go, be, are going to be disabled. Uh, they will be merged under max conversions and max conversion value respectively. So under max conversions, you will be able to set your target CPA similarly will be uh, with uh, maximum conversion value and target ROAS. So I understand that these terms may be complicated and you may be confused if you have never met with these terms before. Uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to ask. All right, so how much should you bid? You should bid enough to get the most out of your daily budget. To calculate your daily budget, divide your monthly marketing budget by 30.4. Leverage past data of your website to try to calculate the conversion rate from your already existing traffic. So, let's say that one out of every five people who call you order your service. Also, let's say that one out of every 10 website visitors actually call you on the phone. This means that one out of every 50 visitors becomes your customer. So, to get that one customer per day, what a $10 CPC you need to spend $10 times 50, $500 per day to get one customer. So this is just a random example. Your CPC is probably going to be higher. Uh, but yeah, this is just a random example to help you get a grasp of how you should actually do your calculations. These numbers, of course, depend on the competition, volume of the keyword you're targeting, etc. All right, so we're now getting into ad extensions. To increase your quality score and your overall ad results, you should use ad extensions. Ad extensions help you make your ad grab more attention by providing more information about your business. Extensions you can add. A location extension. So, uh, as you can see an example over here, here is what a location extension looks like. Phone number. So, call extension. Site links. So, this is a site link extension. And call outs. Bullet points. Uh, so, this is basically a call out extension. There are others, of course. But you should always use ad extensions to improve your ad CTR and therefore increase quality score. So of course, you should always implement ad extensions, uh, add them to your ads. We'll get to the ad creation part in just a second. But uh, just know that these help out a lot. They increase quality score, that they, that, which in result, uh, results in uh, cheaper clicks and uh, basically better results. All right, so writing your ad. Headline one is the most important part of your ad. So this is basically how your ad is going to be structured. So you're going to have your URL over here, headline one, headline two, and uh, on in some cases they're going to display headline three, uh, description one, uh, and uh, the phone number and any other extension that you might be adding, right? So uh, headline one is the most important part of your ad. You'll be basically you'll you'll have an option to write each one of these, right? So uh, headline one is the most important part of your ad. It's what users see first, and if it's not good, meaning that it, if it doesn't grab attention, eight out of 10 people won't read the rest of your ad. It's a good idea to put your keyword inside headline one. 
Uh, in this case, the user will see exactly what he or she has typed in as a search query, making your ad incredibly relevant and therefore worth clicking on. Add relevant information inside headline 2 and the description. You can also add some uh, uh, elements to help grab people's attention. Uh, so your value propositions. It's a good practice to add keyword, uh, yeah, your keyword in your description as well. You just don't stuff keywords. Uh, but yeah, this is a good practice. And tracking performance. Make sure to check your ads account regularly. So once everything is set up, it doesn't take a lot of time to manage your account. So most of the most of work will go into the initial setup and research and all of that stuff. So at the very beginning and a few days after that. But once everything is running smoothly, it doesn't really take a lot of time to manage these things. Uh, Google will often make optimization suggestions like budget increase and changing bidding strategies. These might or might not help you. Know that Google's main goal is to make money like every other company and therefore you'll often see recommendations that benefit them more than you just have this in mind however they want you to succeed as well because their money comes from you right if you don't spend money on ads they don't make money it's that simple so for you to spend money on ads you actually right need to get something in return so many suggestions like improving your landing page or ad copy should be taken into consideration and that wraps it up for this video. Hope that this video was helpful to you. If you need more help, make sure, make sure to check out our website and schedule a call with us. And also join our Facebook group. A written version of this content is going to be available in the description below as well. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Goodbye.